Hi, today we're going to talk about regular polygons. Now what are regular polygons? That name sounds a bit funny. Well, let's break it down. Polygons mean, in, in Greek, because this is originally a Greek term, many shapes, many sides. Now what does that mean? Well, so far we've been dealing with angles and squares and triangles and lines, and they don't have many sides. And the most we've ever worked with was four. With polygons, they can have many, many, many sides. They can have n sides, where n is any number. So I can have a thousand sides, 10,000 sides, a million sides. Now we're not gonna draw in a million sided shape because that's a ton of work but we're gonna talk about properties that apply to all types of polygons and when and how to use them. And the first thing we're gonna start with is with regular polygons. Now regular polygons are certain type of polygons. They're special. Think of regular like standard. And in a regular polygon, every single side has the exact same length. You could say that their lengths are standardized. That's why we call them regular. Other polygons can have sides with all sorts of lengths, but with regular polygons, every side is guaranteed to be the same length. So let's start with, you know, that's a pentagon. A pentagon has five sides. And a regular pentagon, of course, is where all those five sides are equal. So. Now, of course, this is not drawn to scale. I don't have a ruler with me, so I can't make sure that they're all exactly equal. But just know, in this drawing, according to me, all these sides are the same. What about a hexagon? A hexagon has six sides. And if you're wondering what this gone thing is, the gone thing just refers to the fact this is a shape or with sides. And the hexagon refers to how many sides we have. So just like penta referred to five sides, this hex refers to six. So a hexagon looks like this. If it's regular, of course. Again, assume that this is to scale. Now, how is this useful? Well, the first thing we might come across when looking at these polygons is saying, well, what's the sum of their interior angles? We know what a triangle, we proved this last lesson, every single triangle you can possibly draw, the sum of their interior angles has to be 180 degrees. But that rule is not the same for other polygons. Other polygons can have different amounts of sums of interior angles. They don't have to abide by this 180 rule. So with regular polygons, the question becomes, well, what's the sum of their interior angles? We're gonna start simple with a, um, a quadrilateral, which is a type of polygon, and it has four sides. What is, you know, for any quadrilateral, what is the sum of its interior angles? Well, for any quadrilateral, I notice I can draw a line and make two triangles. And since we know that the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, the sum of the, inter of the interior angles in a polygon has to be two times 180 degrees because we have two triangles. So I write uh, sum of angles and side making a table. So, for four sides, our measure is two times 180. What about for five sides? What about, what about a pentagon? Well, a pentagon, I can also split into triangles, of course, assuming it's regular. And here's how I do it. I say, here's one triangle, here's two more. So I have three triangles now, each with a sum of 180 degrees. So the total number in my pentagon has to be three times 180 degrees. Well, what about for 
six sides. What about a hexagon? A hexagon. Looked like this. And here's how we split it there. I say, oh, here's one. Here's two. Here's three and four. So we have four triangles, each with 180 degrees, with six. And now we start to see a pattern here. For four, it's two times 180. For five, it's three times 180. For six, it's four times 180. So what about for n? For any number of sides, for, you know, fill in the blank sides. What's a formula for the sum of an angles and an n-sided polygon, a polygon with n sides? Well, it's actually n minus two times 180. So we can fit n minus two triangles inside that regular polygon. And since the sum of angles in each of those triangles is gonna be 180, the total sum of the angles in that polygon is n times two, n minus two times 180. So four minus 180, three minus 180, two minus 180, they all work for this formula. So interior angles, in a regular polygon is always going their sum is always going to be n minus 2 times 180 and of course if you want to know an individual angle inside a regular polygon since the angles are all guaranteed to be the same measure since all the sides are guaranteed to be the same measure an individual angle so i'm going to say in in parentheses single well that's going to be n minus 2 times 180 divided by the number of angles that we have, which is of course gonna be n. So that's all well and good, but what about exterior angles? We talked about them and if the process for interior angles is gonna be different, if we have a different sided polygon, then surely we can't use the triangle method for exterior angles. And you'd be right thinking that we cannot. But like interior angles, I'm gonna keep my table and see if we can't figure out a pattern for how these exterior angles work. So, let's start. I say, mm, okay. For three sides, the regular polygon, all the sides and all the angles have to be equal. So, each of these angles has to be 180 divided by the number of sides or 60. So this has to be 60. This has to be 60, this has to be 60. So an exterior angle for any one of those sides has to be 180 minus 60, or 60 plus 60, or 120. So make sure you can train this too. So this is gonna be 120 degrees for, make that a little clear, 120 degrees for three sides. What about for four sides? It's gonna have a nice convenient square. Where an exterior angle is gonna be, well, 180 minus 90 or 90 degrees. What about for five? What, what about a pentagon? Well, for a pentagon, a regular pentagon, Oops, we're gonna use our formula that we just figured out for the sum of in, um, the interior angles and then divide that by n to get a single angle. So we can do 180 minus the single angle to get our exterior angle here. So three times 180, that's actually 540 degrees divided by five, because we have five sides, that's 108 degrees. So 180 minus 108, that's actually 72 degrees. Now, let's try to gener generalize. For n number of sides, what is going to be the measure of one exterior angle? It's a great question. Well, notice, mm -hmm. three times 120 is 360, and four times 90 is 360, and five times 72 is 360. We can all take this on our calculator. So, what does this mean? 
This means that the formula then has to be 360 divided by n because 360 divided by 3 gets us 120, 360 divided by 4 gets us 90, so 360 divided by n for n sides gets us the, ex the measure of, of an exterior angle for that. And of course, if, if we wanted to get some of the exterior angles, what well, we just do 360 over n times n and find out, hey, the sum of the exterior angles for any polygon is going to be 360. So that's a bit different from interior angles, where the sum of the interior angles was constantly changing. The sum of the exterior angles is always going to be 360. But if you want an individual value of a single angle that is exterior, that's going to be 360 divided by n. So, interior angles, exterior angles, regular polygons, those are the rules, those are the, def the definitions, and these are the formulas that you can use for solving all sorts of problems with regular polygons. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.